In this video, we'll be looking at the Shape Builder tool in Adobe Illustrator. The Shape Builder tool is a very powerful tool that you can use to manipulate uh, shapes and objects within Adobe Illustrator. Now, the Shape Builder tool is very similar to the Pathfinder tool, and there's a lot of functions that you can do with either tool. Personally, I prefer the Shape Builder tool because when it comes to more complex shapes where you've got a lot of different shapes um, that you're working with all together, the Shape Builder tool tends to do better in those situations. And for that reason, even for simple things, I tend to just kind of always use it so that I'm consistent. That being said, the Pathfinder tool does have some strengths and we will be going over it more in a later video. And I also might touch on it briefly in this episode. So jumping in, let's go ahead and make a couple shapes real quick so that we can start looking at how the Shape Builder tool works. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, make some shapes without a stroke. So I'll go over here to my stroke panel turn stroke off by hitting that none icon there. Go to my fill, double click it, and let's just make this a random color so that it stands out on our artboard. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a square, maybe a circle here, and I'll just drag this out and make another circle. So the way the Shape Builder tool works is it uses the paths uh, of intersecting shapes to slice those shapes and um, extract or add multiple parts. So if you go ahead and select all of our shapes here, you can see where there's all these overlaps, creating these shapes within shapes. If we go to our Shape Builder tool, which is gonna be found in the left-hand toolbar, it's these two circles, with dots in the middle, and a little cursor. We'll go ahead and bring that up, and as I roll over these selected shapes, you can see that now it's starting to highlight these individual shapes that are created by the intersecting paths. So with the Shape Builder tool, you can merge extract or subtract uh, diff these different shapes. So for example, uh, let's say that I wanted to take out this crescent shape over here. Okay, What I could do is I could click here once to go ahead and separate that shape from the rest. And what you'll see now is if I bring out my direct selection tool, click off of all those and then I'll reselect just this one shape. I can drag it out and now I'll have just this crescent shape separate from these. Now what I could also do, if I knew that I just wanted this crescent shape, I could bring my, my Shape Builder tool back out, hold the Alt key, and what you'll see is that turns that little plus icon to a minus, and now I'm subtracting. So what I can go ahead and do is click on all of these other shapes, and it'll leave me with just this crescent. Now alternatively, you can hold that Alt key, and then you can click and drag, and as you'll see, it draws this line through the shapes. And as you go over um, the different sections, it will highlight them all together. When you release, it'll delete them all at once. Now you can do the same with merging shapes. So if you don't hold the Alt key, for example, you can go ahead and now merge these shapes together. So let's say I wanted to merge these three sections, hit release, go back to my direct selection tool, and now I can go ahead and separate those two things out. So let's go ahead and try to just make a quick, simple graphic here so that we can start to understand how it works a bit better. And then we'll hop into a bit more complicated design exercise. So I'm just gonna try to make a quick little flower graphic. I'm gonna go ahead and drag out four circles here. I'll drag holding shift there to draw a circle directly next to this one. And I'll select both of these, alt shift drag down again uh, to go ahead and make four circles here. I'll select all four of those circles and bring out my Shape Builder tool. And I'm just gonna draw a line connecting all of these and then also draw through the middle here to make sure that negative space that they're creating is selected. When I release, that's gonna go ahead and merge all of those into one single shape, including the negative space here in the middle. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and draw one more circle in the middle here. I'll find my center point with my Smart Guides, hold Alt so that it creates the shape around that center point and Shift to make a perfect circle. Just go ahead and make that circle right in the middle. Now I'm going to select that middle circle and the original shape we created. Bring out my Shape Builder tool and holding Alt to turn on the uh, subtract or delete feature, go ahead and click that middle circle. I'll go ahead and hold Shift to rotate this 45 degrees. And I've got a nice little flower graphic here. Now let's go ahead and move on to a more complicated exercise. So what I want to do in this exercise is try to replicate uh, this design that I made here. So let's say you're creating a graphic for some sort of company with the initials IG 
Um, and we want to create this kind of overlapping effect here where it looks like the letters are woven together. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and just type out the letters that I'll need to work with uh, to create this design. So I'm going to go ahead and just type I. And for this uh, design, I'm going to be using the Rockwell font. I'll use uh, Rockwell STD. Next, I'm going to duplicate that and type out a G. Now to work with these with the Shape Builder tool, I'm going to need these to be actual shapes, not live text objects, which means I'm going to need to expand them. However, as we know, once I expand them, they will not be editable anymore, so I am just going to bring over the live text, uh, just make a duplicate of them so that I've got them in my file if I should need to edit them later for some reason. Go ahead and highlight both of these, go to Object, Expand, and hit OK. Alright, so now what I've got to do is make this eye longer. I don't want to simply expand it up like this, um, because as you can see, now this letter is wider than my uh, other letter, the G over here. So what I'm going to do instead, is I'm going to go ahead and bring out my direct selection tool. I'm going to click and drag to highlight just this top section, so that only the top anchor points and paths are being selected, and when I'm manipulating this text, the bottom will not be affected. Then what I'm going to do is grab this path, hold shift and just drag up in a straight line. About like that looks good. Now what I'll do is grab my normal selection tool again and bring the G over onto the top onto the top of the eye here using the smart guides to align it to the center. All right, so now that I've got these stacked and aligned how I want, before I actually start cutting the shapes, I am just going to go ahead and grab both of these, make another duplicate. I like to do this at various stages throughout the project so that if I do mess something up, I don't need to completely restart and I've got this uh, fresh canvas as a starting point again. So to start, I want to go ahead and make this top cut in the G here. So this is the section where it looks like the I is overlapping the G. And while I'm doing that, I want to keep in mind that I want this, uh, these gaps here to be the same uh, width as the gaps that I eventually make down here on the bottom in the I. So to go ahead and do that, what I'm going to do is duplicate this I because I want to have a second copy of it to essentially use as a cookie cutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command C on my keyboard with the I selected. That will copy. And then what I'm going to do is hold Command Shift and hit V. Holding Command Shift when you hit V pastes in the same exact spot as you copied from. So what you can see here is if I drag this out, there's actually a copy here um, that was directly on top of the original I. Just for ease of use and distinction, I'm going to go ahead and make this top copy pink. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the arrow keys to nudge. So every time I hit the arrow key, it will nudge it an equal distant amount. So I'm going to go ahead and do five nudges out. One, two, three, four, five. And I think that's a pretty good distance for my cut. Now I want to make this cut on both sides, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and Alt-Drag to make a copy of this pink eye. And I'm going to line it back up with the original one, and then I'm going to nudge it back the other way five times. One, two, three, four, five. So now I know that these uh, new lines here are equidistant from the original down beneath them. I'm going to select both of them, and then this is where the Pathfinder tool can come in handy. Instead of trying to use the shape builder to go through and merge all these like this, which you could do, um, I'm just going to select both of these top pink eyes. I'm going to go ahead and open my Pathfinder tool, which currently is not showing. So I'll go to Window, Pathfinder. I'm just going to go ahead and snap this over onto my toolbar. And I'm going to get hit the first one here, which is Unite. So that is going to go ahead and just merge the selected shapes. And this is the one Pathfinder tool that I use probably most often. Alright, so now I'm just going to go ahead and select this pink shape. This is going to be my cookie cutter form. And I'm going to select the shape that I want to cut, which is the G. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and hit minus. And that is going to erase any of the selected shapes that are in that intersection right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and click off of that to deselect the G and then just select the pink bits here and delete. And now what you can see here is that it's erased just this one selected section of the G where the cookie cutter and the shape I wanted to cut intersected. So next I'm going to do the same thing down here to make uh, this intersection here to create the illusion of the G overlapping the I on the bottom. So this is going to be the same concept. I'm going to go ahead and select my G. I'm going to hit Command-C, 
Command Shift V again to go ahead and make that copy here right on top. Make this a color again so it stands out. And this time I'll nudge it up five spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. Alt drag down to line it up with that original one and then nudge it five times downwards. One, two, three, four, five. Go ahead and select both of these pink shapes. Go to my Pathfinder tool, unite them. And then I'll go ahead and select that pink form and the eye. And I'll go ahead, bring my Shape Builder tool out and subtract that section there. Now I'll go ahead and erase the pink parts. And as you can see, I have now got this original design that we set out to create. So as you can see, that's a very powerful tool and it really helps us manipulate shapes in a lot of cool ways. Um, but it can be a little bit complicated and so you kind of understand how it works, it can be kind of difficult to kind of reverse engineer um, and figure out you know, what shapes you need to put where in order to make the right cuts and manipulations. Um, to help you kind of get a grasp of that, I did just build a bunch of uh, objects with the Shape Builder tool here, a bunch of little designs. They kind of range in complexity from very simple to more complicated down here. And if you want, you can just kind of um, you know, pause on this frame, open up Illustrator, and look at each one of these shapes and try to figure out how you'd make it uh, in Illustrator using the Shape Builder tool and some basic shapes. Now, a quick, couple quick little tips. Just remember that when you're working with text, you'll need to expand the text um, to make it shapes before you start working with it. And also, uh, don't get confused by the fact that these are all uh, outlined objects. Uh, if it helps you, think of them as filled in objects here. So when I was making these shapes, for the most part, I made them like this with the with a fill selected here. Um, but then once they were created, I went ahead, hit this button to swap fill and stroke. Uh, made them into outlines and then put my stroke at 8. So if you want some practice, just go ahead, try to go ahead and go through starting at the top left and you're working your way through and um, kind of try to reverse engineer these designs and see how you can make them using simple shapes and the Shape Builder tool.